let's talk about different ways you can manually balance a system. The first way we're going to talk about is a, um, a ball valve. Now, this is a Victaulic 78BL ball valve. If you look at the controllability of the valve, now I have the valve fully shut. Now I'm going to go to a point where we start to see flow on our balancing, on a, our flow meter. Now you'll notice I'm getting that valve to about 20, 30 degrees open, and I'm finally starting to see some flow on the meter. So basically, I have a valve that operates across 90 degrees from fully closed to fully open, and I'm already using 30% of that range just to get the valve to open. Now as I go through my range of control, you're starting to see some controllability. I'm opening up a little bit further, I'm getting into what's the, what's the comfortable range for a half, inch, a half inch valve. So we're at about 2 GPM, but you'll notice there's a lot of noise coming through that valve. That noise isn't just the flow going through the valve, that noise is cavitation starting to form because of the way the flow passes through a ball valve as opposed to some of the other valves that we'll talk about later. Now, Cavitation can be a serious problem within a system. Not only does it produce noise, which is a creature comfort issue, it also can damage the system as those cavitation bubbles collapse against solid surfaces. Now let's open a little bit further. We're getting two and a half, three GPM. Now we're getting to a point where we're really outside of the range of what you would use a half inch valve for. And you'll notice we're at about the 70 degree, 60, 70 degree open position. So realistically, we're only using about 30% of our usable range to balance the system as opposed to just moving the valve. So all of our control has to happen within that small window. Let's talk about controllability. So let's bring ourselves up to a point that we can measure. So we're at about one and a half GPM. So now let's say two GPM is our, is our flow range, our desired or designed flow rate that we're trying to achieve. Balancer will come along, they don't have the benefit of the flow meter, so they can't just look at that to determine what their flow rate is. What they have to do is go figure out what increment they're on. In this case, they'll be on increment number five. And then take the CV value, either use an app or use a calculator to calculate what their flow rate is. And they say, well, hey, I'm not at my design flow rate. I have to go to the next step up. Now, the next step up on this case is six. So now if I go up to six on that scale, You'll notice I've jumped an entire GPM. I've completely passed my design flow rate and got up to the next point I can measure, which is now overflowing. I'm now beyond the point where I want to balance or the point where I want to be for my design flow. So I really can't get there with the scale that's on that valve. I have to kind of put it somewhere in the middle and then I can either try to interpolate the value, which isn't always that easy to do because it's not linear, or I can just kind of make a guess at it and my balancing position is wherever it is. So I'm not really getting that good of control or balancing with that product. This is an angled pattern globe valve. And rangeability is the relationship between output of control to input of control. So the amount of movement I put in the valve has a good relationship to the amount of control I get out of it. Now, you notice it's a little different from their ball valve. One, now I have a multi-turn valve. This valve has four turns to operate instead of having just 90 degrees. So instead of, instead of the 10 position scale, now within each of those four turns, I have 100 discrete positions that I can set the valve at. I have a visual indicator showing where those positions are. So now you have an accurate read on wh what position that valve is in. Let's see the difference. So now I'm at my GPM and a half like I was before. I'm trying to get my design flow rate to two. Now I'm turning, and I'm actually passing about 40 measurable positions on that hand wheel in order to get to that position. So now, instead of being halfway in between two positions, I now have 40 different positions I can verify along the way to be able to bring myself up to my design flow rate. So much better control, much better rangeability. Globe valve. You have no trouble whatsoever closing the valve all the way. You can use it to isolate the system, do your service. And then if you set the valve properly using a, a three millimeter Allen key and a memory stop, when it's time to open the valve back up again, you can take it right to your balancing position by opening it up all the way. I have the memory stop set on this one already. So now I'm taking it right back up and I'm right at my two GPM design flow rate again. Now contrast that with the ball valve. Now I have a Teflon seated ball valve. It's in an intermediate position. 
So the opening of the ball valve is sitting across the seat on the valve. Now, the problem with Teflon is it has a property called cold flow. And if you have a, the ball sitting halfway across the seat, the Teflon will tend to cold flow around the edge of the ball, and you wind up with a little indentation on the seat where you need to seal. When you go to close that valve, you bring it to its closed position, and that indentation will cause a leak, with, a leak path within the valve. And that valve really isn't the best thing for using for isolation at that point. So normally, if you see ball-type balancing valves, they'll usually incorporate a secondary ball valve to isolate the system if you need to.